When given a chance to apply the works of giving to our prayers of faith, why do we falter? Welcome. When I was younger growing up, I would hear pastors preach against what they call the social gospel. And I understood their definition of it, and I agreed with them because they were my pastor, and you're supposed to believe what your pastor teaches you. That's generally a good rule of thumb. But as I grew older, I began to see that there were some exceptions to this, or maybe it's not so much an exception as it is a method. For example, when we started our Touch of Life program of feeding children, some of our most devoted donors were upset. They thought that I was no longer interested in helping preachers, that I was now preaching a social gospel, which I was not, of course. So today in episode 47, we're going to be talking about this subject from the New Testament, from the book of James, be warmed and fed, but not by me. James, the pastor of the first church in Jerusalem, was perhaps the first pastor in history, and he was also the younger brother of Jesus. Now, Jesus had trained the disciples for a few years, but James lived with him most of his life. Now, imagine what he learned from his older half-brother, both by speech and by example. Perhaps this is why James tells us that pure religion is demonstrated not by theological education or position, but by caring for the widows, orphans, the incarcerated, who were often unjustifiably incarcerated in that day, and to take care of the needy as well. He revealed the self-righteous hypocrisy of the so-called religious class by scolding them for their inaction. He said to them, though you have an ample wardrobe, you see the naked and say to them, God bless you, I'll pray for you, that you receive some clothes, but you still send them away naked. You see the hungry and say, well, God bless you. I'll pray that God sends you food, but you send them away still hungry, knowing that in your kitchen pantry, there's an abundance of food. In essence, they were saying to the needy, I pray God sends someone to clothe you and to feed you, just not me. We like to read this passage because it makes us feel more spiritual than the hypocrites he rebuked. But I must wonder why James mentions only two categories, food and clothing. Are they the only categories by which we should demonstrate our faith by our works? I believe this principle applies to every area of our lives, providing health care assistance, paying a bill for the unemployed, babysitting for a single mother at work, etc. If I pray for your need to be supplied while ignoring that God has already given me the ability to supply it, Am I not as guilty as those whom James rebuked? What about you? At our bedsides and in our church pews, we pray for lost souls, for our families, for our jobs, our country, and even missionaries. I hope you're praying for missionaries. But when given a chance to apply the works of giving to our prayers of faith, why do we falter, giving little or nothing at all? The Apostle John also knew Jesus well, but where James made a statement on the subject, John asked a question. If you possess worldly goods, he asked, and seeing a brother in need don't help him, then how can you claim the love of God lives in you and through you? That's a good question for all of us to consider. Many church members pray for missionaries while never giving to help. They make pledges to the church's missions fund but never fulfill it. Of what value is that prayer? Never pledge without fulfilling it. Never delay fulfilling a pledge you can pay today. Is there someone in your church who has a physical or financial need you can meet? Why not volunteer to care for it? Imagine the blessing you will be. Imagine the example it will give your children. When it comes to helping others, remember that wants are not needs. If they could have fulfilled their own needs, but instead wasted their funds elsewhere, theirs is not a need you should bother with. What need has someone met for you? We hope you've enjoyed this episode in our Understanding the Great Commission series. If you'd like a copy of the book, it's available in paperback, audiobook, and digital download. Just click the link in the description below. Thank you for watching.